there are a plethora of reasons as to why the left has not been very successful at gaining power in American politics, but one of the main reasons is because I think that the left, largely speaking, generally speaking, has not been tough enough. They're just not willing to go after leadership. And this isn't just, you know, about people running for president. This is elected members of Congress. And we're starting to kind of see, you know, the uh, winds change a little bit. But still, I mean, you can't expect to really affect change from the inside if you're not going after the biggest barriers to change, and that is members of the Democratic Party's leadership. And so what a lot of people can do if they are in a position of influence or power is endorse some of these primary challengers to incumbent Democrats. Endorse Michaela Wilkes, who's going up against Denny Hoyer. Endorse Shahid Buttar, who's running against Nancy Pelosi. These are really difficult campaigns to run. Like what AOC managed to do in taking out Joe Crowley, that is so difficult to accomplish. The fact that she pulled that off was basically a miracle, right? But she did it and she ran a phenomenal campaign, but we can't just stop there. We have to keep going and oust members of the Democratic Party, oust members of leadership, especially who aren't allowing a progressive agenda to even be contemplated on the floor of the Senate or the House. So, with that being said, um, I am disappointed that more people aren't endorsing Shahid Buttar. Bernie should have endorsed Shahid Buttar, and there's still time, but I don't think that he will. Um, AOC could make a difference by endorsing Shahid Buttar. So there's not a lot of people who are willing to stick their necks on the line to, you know, endorse one of their fellow colleagues. And I get it. I'm not in Congress, so I don't have to deal with that pressure of, you know, condemning a colleague um, because that would make for a really awkward work environment. Nonetheless, if you truly care about priorities, then you can't allow Nancy Pelosi to remain at the top of the Democratic Party. Otherwise, the party's going nowhere. She's driving the party into a ditch and we're all suffering because of it. So we need bold change and that means you take some risks right you endorse her primary challenger she may try to marginalize you within congress she may try to isolate you but i mean that's what you've got to do bernie sanders has no reason to not endorse shahid buttar i mean sure the democratic party would attack him but here's the thing nancy pelosi if you remember was part of these Stop Bernie meetings with Chuck Schumer, Neera Tanden, and Pete Buttigieg, as reported on by the New York Times. So there's already bad blood there. So why not just add to, you know, the momentum that Shahid already has and endorse him? Right now, a lot of people don't know who Shahid Buttar is. So if a lot of these high-profile figures within the Democratic Party or associated with the Democratic Party back him, that could be make or break. But with that being said, there is an individual who is very prominent, who ran for president, who decided to do what I think is really, really unexpected. Endorse Shahid Buttar. And that person, of course, is Marianne Williamson. She came out with a surprising endorsement of Shahid Buttar on top of other phenomenal endorsements that she's been making lately. And she made a really passionate and I think powerful, realistic case as to why Nancy Pelosi has got to go. Take a look. I want to talk to you about a congressional endorsement that I think is very important. I have long had great admiration for Nancy Pelosi because she's the first woman speaker of the House, and I believe that her achievements have paved the way in really profound ways for women such as myself. At the same time, I am a lifelong Democrat who has become very, very concerned with the corporatist direction of the party in too many cases. And I admit my own experience uh, in, the camp in the presidential campaign showed me how the control of certain forces at the expense of progressive voices is a direction that is taking Democratic Party away from the principles on which I was al always raised to believe it stands. And so in this election, I feel that we need to do everything possible to make a strong stand for those of us who have been Democrats, for those of us who are Democrats, we need to take a strong stand for the progressive vision that many of us feel is absolutely essential, not only for the future of our country, but also for this next election. And as a consequence, I am now endorsing Shahid Buttar uh, for the seat, the congressional seat in the San Francisco district where Nancy Pelosi now serves. We have to get right to the heart of things. 
and the Nancy Pelosi's of this world, and I say this with all due respect for Nancy Pelosi, have got to hear us that we are serious, have got to understand that, yes, we on the left will challenge you. We on the left that, God, Nancy, this was what we always thought you were. This is, this is what I always thought the Democratic Party was supposed to be. We've heard long enough, how, yes, you understand. No, 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 no. This last Heroes Act, that did it for me. Mm -mm. Should be $2,000 a month until this is done. We need Medicare for all. We need a, a, a show of, of compassion for the American people. That is simply not the agenda these days for the corporate-backed Democratic Party. And if that doesn't change, I think we're going to have a hard time this year. And America is even going to have a harder time in the future. So I hope you'll check out Shahid Batar because I think he's worthy of our support. He's, um, he's a perfect challenger for Nancy. I think this is good for Nancy. <laughs> that was excellent. And I cannot emphasize how important this move is. A name like Marianne Williamson, who ran for president, is endorsing the challenger to the leader of the House of Representatives. This is huge. This is a game changer. And look, Marianne Williamson, she doesn't necessarily have anything to gain from this, but she does have something to lose. Because if she chooses to run for president again in 2024, and I hope she does, you know, she's going to go into that race knowing that leadership doesn't like her. If you endorse a primary opponent of a member of leadership, they're going to hate you. But she did it anyway. She did it anyway because she is principled and she's bold. She's not trying to curry favor with the left. She did this because she genuinely believes that Nancy Pelosi is an obstacle to progress. Yes, decades ago, she was a pioneer when it came to social justice. You know, she spoke out in favor of LGBTQ rights, but now she's blocking Medicare for all, which would save lives, right? She's not effectively challenging Donald Trump. She's failing us in a number of ways. So she's got to go. She's got to go. She's out of touch. And quite frankly, she's a bad person. Nancy Pelosi is a bad person. She's a multimillionaire. She doesn't care about what poor people are experiencing. So she's got to go. And if nobody wants to be, you know, um, bold and endorse her primary challenger, then you can't complain about Nancy Pelosi. So for Marianne Williamson to do this, I, I just, I value it so much because if you truly want to beat the Republican Party, well, you've got to acknowledge that they're the final boss. You have to get to the sub-boss and beat them first. And that boss is Democratic Party leadership. And if the left doesn't actually take on effectively Democratic Party leadership, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Steny Hoyer, we're never going to be able to win because we're not going to be able to challenge Republicans because people like Nancy Pelosi are going to use their institutional powers to squash the left at every turn. So you've got to fight fire with fire and challenge them. Take their jobs. And things like this help. So I absolutely love Marianne Williamson. Like, she has completely won me over. We don't agree on every single policy. But in terms of her strategy and her priorities, we're absolutely aligned. And everything that she has done has proven to people that she cares about the issues. She cares. You know, she wasn't just running for president as a vanity project. She was running because she genuinely cares about left-wing issues. And, you know, she's not willing to stay silent as leadership fails the people, which is so important. It's one of the biggest things lacking from the progressive movement. Nobody wants to call out leadership. Everyone's too afraid to speak up. But Marianne Williamson has absolutely been vocal at calling out leadership. I mean, look at this tweet that she shared about the HEROES Act. Quote, even if we're only speaking in crass political terms, how can the Democrats think all these incremental efforts are going to inspire anyone? It's like trying to sexually seduce someone with new office equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many tweets like if you go through marianne williamson's timeline everything she's saying is in lockstep with the progressive movement so look it's really important to have leaders in the progressive movement because you can only be a leaderless movement for so long until you know you start seeing increasing factionalization you see you know the movement itself kind of dissipate this is why you know I worry so much about Bernie's movement because look at what happened to Occupy, even though that was a leaderless movement with no hierarchies, and I think that's commendable. You've got to have a leader to kind of steer the ship, and we have a lot of progressive leaders, and one of them unquestionably is Marianne Williamson, 
And she is one of the few leaders we have who's actually willing to call out Democratic Party leadership. And I cannot stress how important that is. Because again, if you want to critique Republicans, that's all fine and dandy. They're awful. They're terrible. But they are the final boss. If we cannot use the Democratic Party as a vehicle to actually take on the Republican Party, then it's going to be very difficult to affect change. So that means we've got to oust members of the Democratic Party's leadership who are obstacles to change. And this is the most basic thing that you can do to facilitate that goal. Get people out of leadership who are steering the party in the wrong direction. And Marianne Williamson is helping with that. And I absolutely love her. She's the real deal. And I cannot tell you how valuable she's been as a leader. Um, to me, she is just, I mean, I, I love her. I don't know what else to say. I know I've said that, but it's so nice to see someone who is being principled and actually is committed to a progressive agenda, you know, a new vision for America. And it's great. It, it's really great to see. It's so valuable and it really means so much to me. So thank you, Marianne Williamson. I don't know if she'll see this video, but if you do, what you're doing is so amazing. Please keep it up.